swelling, headache or a rash, asthma, colitis, fatigue or gas, what will today's symptom be? My loopy life with lupus. Hey guys, so it is Sunday night and I am about to head to bed soon, but I just thought I would do a quick little um, health update and I wanted to let you guys know that I finally, after ugh, I don't know how many months it's been now since I put in the request for the heart procedure, but I finally received a date um, and it's funny they called me and woke me up on Friday morning at like 8 30 in the morning and I was like half asleep uh, when I was talking to them and they gave me the date of September the 24th and when I hung up and went to mark it on the calendar I realized it like dawned on me when I looked at the calendar that the 24th is the day that my mom and I have tickets to see Wicked. So I was like, oh my gosh, of all dates, after all this time, they book it on the same day as Wicked. <laughs> and there was no way I'm going to miss Wicked. And even if I did, like, that's a lot of money. Um, the tickets were not cheap. So um, I called them back right away. And I got their voicemail as usual, <laughs> so I left a message explaining the situation, saying, you know, can you book me on the next um, available date, which I was hoping would not be too much of a delay. Thankfully, they called me back within a half hour, and she just chuckled, and she's like, don't worry, she's like, we can fit you in the following week which would be October the 1st. So the date is October the 1st and I have to go for blood work, not this week, but the week after, like the week of October, the I mean the week of September the 15th. I have to go for blood work that they have to have in advance. I'm not sure exactly what they're gonna be looking at, but I guess there's some things that they just have to check with blood work before doing the procedure. Um, almost like, I guess, like a pre-op type um, checkup type thing. Um, they haven't given me a time yet. She said that they will let me know closer to the date what time I have to be there on October the 1st. Um, it just depends on what's available. Um, so I don't have a time yet. I'm hoping it won't be as early as the last time I had this procedure done because um, I think the last time we had to be there like five o'clock in the morning or like six o'clock in the morning or something which is like ugh. so um, I'm really hoping that I won't have to be there that early yeah so um, like I said so it's October the 1st and um, that actually works out better than September the 24th because obviously September the 24th not only was the day to see Wicked but it was also like technically my last week at this little tiny job I'm doing for September so it would have I would have had to miss out on a, I think three days of pay which would not have been very good so it works out my job here will be done by then and I'll be able to not worry about recovery time be, um, because I won't be missing any work so I'll just be at home and I can take as much time as I need to recuperate from it um, so yeah so basically for those who are new to my channel and are wondering what is this heart procedure all about just give you a brief overview now mind you um, it's been a long time since I last had it done so I don't know if anything has changed at all but I will tell you what my experience was before from what I can remember remember so um, basically in 2002 when all of my health issues started they discovered that I had an irregular heartbeat where I had every few heartbeats I would have an extra heartbeat 
And so they put me on a medication called metoprolol at that time, which was managing it pretty well. Um, it's not a serious condition. Um, nothing really can happen with it, um, except some people do occasionally pass out or get blackouts from it. I've never personally had that. It's usually been pretty well maintained by medication. The only thing is, is that it's almost like a nuisance in that sometimes I will feel the extra heartbeats or I'll feel like my heart is racing, um, but it doesn't happen very often. Um, so it's just more of a nuisance symptom um, than being a serious, you know, health issue. Um, so in 2004, um, they suggested me trying um, what they call a, an ablation of the heart. And it's where they go in with, I guess it's like a catheter of some sort, that they go in, they look they try to find what is causing the extra heartbeats and if they find it then they zap it with like electricity or something and it's supposed to eliminate it and you know stop it and get rid of it um, that was the goal at that time was to get rid of it so that I wouldn't have to take any more medication for it and I would be fine for the rest of my life I wouldn't even have to worry about this issue anymore however it was not successful um, they just couldn't get to it um, and they didn't want to keep at it for much longer so they gave up and I was put on a second medication called Verapamil. So I was on Metoprolol, Metoprolol and Verapamil for quite a few years um, and then I started to feel the extra heartbeats a lot more. Things were kind of acting up and so they switched me from Metoprolol to Sotolol um, but I'll, but still staying on the verapamil. So I've been on verapamil and sotolol now for I would say maybe I'm gonna say maybe six or seven years now. Um, and that's where I've been at that. And then I got referred to this new cardiologist, and because they wanted me to see him because they wanted to see if maybe because since all of that happened I had been diagnosed with lupus and so they just wanted me to see this new cardiologist for a second opinion to see if um, the extra heartbeats was related to lupus and the cardiologist really doesn't think it is he thinks it's a separate issue all on its own he thinks I may even have been born with it and it just went undetected for you know many years but they're not really sure um, and so anyways, he's just been following me up once a year. Once a year, I go for a Holter um, heart monitor for 24 to 48 hours. Um, and, you know, he just keeps me on the medication and monitors things and everything's been pretty well. Um, then, just in this last year, he suggested trying the heart ablation again. He said it was really up to me, but he suggested giving it another go. And, you know, since he is a different cardiologist, maybe he'd be able to get it. Um, because he said, really, like, for my age, I'm on a lot of heart medications because now I'm also on Adelat for the Raynaud's in my feet, which is also another heart medication. So he just suggested giving it a try, see if I can get off the medication, and it would be, you know, two less pills a day to take, which I'm quite all right with. Um, so after talking it over with my mom and Alex and just thinking about it, I decided to go ahead and give it another shot. Um, and now that I actually have a date, I'm quite nervous about it because the procedure, like when I had the procedure done the last time, it was not a pleasant experience for me. And here's why. <laughs> Um, bef you have to be awake for the procedure. They do not put you under, but they do give you like drugs to make you out of it and loopy. Um, they're supposed to give the drugs to you through an IV before the whole procedure starts. Um, but when I went to have it done, they couldn't get an IV in me. They tried, they tried nurse could not get an IV in me. So they were unable to start the medication 
to make me out of it. Um, so when they got me in the prep room, um, right before going in the OR, um, they tried giving me a sedative pill under my tongue. It didn't do anything for me. It, I didn't feel anything from that. And so when they brought me into the OR, there was a tech there who got the procedure going. And the way that they do it is they put a they put the catheter through a vein in your groin. And I felt it going in and it was extremely painful. I felt like I was being stabbed. It was the worst pain ever. And I immediately started crying and the tech was a jerk and he was like, why are you crying? Why are you crying? And I'm telling him it's really painful. It's really hurting. He's like, oh, you know, stop crying. He was very mean. Um, now once it was in there, <laughs> they were actually able to give me drugs through that. And then the rest of the procedure, I was half asleep. I was like half out of it. The only thing I felt was the odd little twinge um, or chest pain in my chest as they were trying to zap things in there. Um, but I don't remember too much about that. The worst pain was putting the catheter in the groin, in the vein in the groin, and I, I don't want to experience that again. Now, I have had IVs since then with no issues, so knock on wood pray for me keep your fingers crossed for me that they will be able to get the IV in with no issues and hopefully this time I will be doped up I will be letting them know that I don't want to feel that going in I will let them know what happened the last time for sure because I don't want to feel that again it was the worst pain ever yeah it was horrible and I guess that's pretty much it guys um so yeah October 1st is the date I'm going to vlog it for sure. Um, I want to bring you guys along for the experience. Um, if it is anything like the last time, I will have to stay overnight for observation. And also, the one of the worst parts of the procedure is that afterwards, you have to lay on your back in bed for, I think it was like seven, six or seven hours without moving. I can't get up out of the bed. Cannot move at all. I remember Alex had to feed me um, the last time and also like I had to use a bed pan and all that fun stuff because I was not allowed to get up. So I'm not looking forward to that part again especially now that I have lupus because um, I can imagine that I will get quite stiff and sore from that. I will probably get very sore because I know how I am like if I am sitting for a long period of time and not moving I get very stiff and sore so I'm not looking forward to that part either <laughs> especially since I'm coming down on prednisone and I have been experiencing some pain in the last week so I'm not looking forward to that either but I'm just really really hoping that this time around will be successful. My mom actually knows a lady that went through the same thing as me that she went through the procedure once and it was unsuccessful and then a couple of years later they tried it again and it was successful and she's been totally fine since then. She hasn't had to take any medication for her heart problems gone so I'm hoping that that will happen this time around I hope they'll be able to get it and that it will be gone and I will never have to worry about getting those damn holters every year because oh, they are a pain I'm very much allergic to the pads um, so this year when I got it done they actually tried using the baby pad like the pads that they use on the babies and it was a lot better, but it's still a very unpleasant thing to wear for 24 to 48 hours. I hate it, hate it, hate it. So, so I'm hoping it will be a success and I won't have to do that anymore. It'll be one less doctor to see, one less or two less medications to take, possibly three if I don't need the Adalat for the Raynaud's anymore, which... I probably will still need the Adalat for the Raynaud's because I get 
especially now with winter coming, it my toes will get cold very easily. So, um, yeah, so that's, that's it guys. I have the date and, um, yeah, I'm hopeful that it will work. I hope, I hope, I hope. Um, and I hope and pray that I will not be in pain like I was the last time they did it. I just hope they can get that IV started and I can be completely out of it. <laughs> So I guess that's pretty much it. Um, I don't think there's anything else to tell you guys. So yeah, so I will keep you posted um, as the date draws near. And like I said, I will definitely um, try to vlog as much of the experience as possible. And I guess that's it. I'm going to call it a night so I can quickly edit this and get it uploading for the morning and then I'm off to bed um yeah so thanks so much for watching guys please please pray for me that this procedure works and that it will not be as unpleasant as it was the last time and uh we'll see you in the next video good night guys